Hi everybody, uh, this week I'm going to do a cone 10 gas glaze firing, a reduction firing. And um, so I've just loaded the kiln. I have all of my pieces in there. These are all test pieces. None of these are glazes that I've really tried before. And um, so I guess it's just fingers crossed. We'll see how it comes out. I've got two cones in there. I've got a cone 10 and I've got an 08. Um, usually I do a little bit of a larger cone pack than that, but I don't feel it's necessary this time. I think I can get by with that. Um, it's easily visible from the peephole. And so it's starting to rain here, so I'm going to close the lid on the kiln and um, candle for maybe about a half an hour or an hour, and uh, we'll get going. Alright, so it's been about 45 minutes since I started the firing. I've got this kiln shelf on top here because it was raining, so I'm going to take that off. Um, and holding my hand over the flue, I'd say the kiln is probably at about 200 degrees right now. Um, there's very, very, very little fire in the burner ports. I've got it on the light flame. Um, I'm just going to slowly creep through this range from 2 to 300 over the next hour or so, just to make sure everything is really dry before I start to increase the temperature. Alrighty, so it's two hours since I started the kiln. I think we're at about 300 degrees or so, and I'll start turning up a little bit more rapidly now until I reach about 900 degrees. Alright, so I've been just coming out every half hour and turning up the kiln, um, kind of doing my regular procedure, um, checking the flue gas temperature, just kind of like checking to make sure it's hotter than it was before. Um, and checking on top of the burner ports to make sure that there's no real heat escaping from there and checking the back pressure. There's a little bit of back pressure but not so much that's coming back out of the burner ports. Um, and so I think the damper's about good right there. It's a little more than half closed and uh, so I'll start to scooch that out um, probably after quartz inversion when I start turning the kiln up in earnest. All right, so it's about three and a half or four hours after I started the kiln. I'd say about three and a half hours. As you can see, the kiln does not quite have any glowing red color yet, but we are nearing quartz inversion. I can tell that by the roar of the burners and also looking inside the burner ports, the bag wall bricks are starting to glow just a little bit and so it's getting up there in temperature. Normally I would turn up the kiln at this point but I'm actually going to leave it and let it slowly climb through the 900 to 1200 degree range at this gas setting and then turn it up right after that. Alright I'm here at the center peephole of the kiln. You can see there's the top of the kiln and there's the bottom of the kiln. I'm here roughly in the center and I've got this nice dull red color, which means that we're past the danger zone for pots breaking in quartz inversion. And so I'll now probably turn the kiln up a good bit, and then um, once I reach about 1800 I'll put it in body reduction. So I'll see you again for body reduction. Alright everybody, so cone 08 is beginning to fall, and it's about time to put the kiln into reduction. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to turn up the gas about that much and I'm going to just nudge in the damper a little. And I'm smelling the gases that are coming off of here and there's kind of like a sour acrid smell to the exhaust and that's what you want. That tells you that the kiln is in reduction. Um, sometimes you'll get a flame. It's pretty light out right now. I think at night we'd see a little bit of a haze of a flame, but can't see that right now. But this kiln is definitely in reduction based on the smell. And I will keep it here for about the next 45 minutes, and then I'll start climbing again. When you put the kiln in reduction, it kind of, it usually stops climbing or stops quite climbing quite as quickly um, because the fuel to air mixture isn't burning as efficiently as it normally would. We are getting up there in temperature. I don't really know exactly what 
temperature we're at right now, but we're probably about about 2100, 2000 degrees. The color you see on the camera is far brighter than what it is in real life. This is this is kind of a medium orange. It looks very yellow on camera. As you can see, the cone, well, maybe you can't see, um, but cone, I've got a cone 10 in there and it is not down yet. Um, the burners are blasting away. I've got a little bit of a flame peeking out of the top of the chimney, so the kiln is in really light reduction. Um, heavy reduction would look something like this. Um, just wait for a second until it... That would be heavy reduction. We don't really want that. Um, I just want to fire to completion in light reduction. And um, the kiln will keep climbing, but not quite as quickly as it would in a neutral or oxidizing atmosphere. And then I'll give it one more kind of reduction soak at the end. I'm gonna just open the damper a smidge that and uh, I will see you folks closer to completion hi everybody so um, we are rapidly approaching cone 10 here I um, the reduction flame was about this tall a little while ago I turned it up for just a little bit more for the last couple minutes um, alternately you could close the damper a little bit to change the reduction uh, as you can see, the burner ports are really, really bright. You might not even be able to hear me over the sound of the burner. And you can't see this probably, but I can. Inside that burner, inside that people, their cone pen is just starting to bend very slightly. So I'm going to give this about another 10 minutes until cone 10 is well and truly down and shut it off. I'll probably do one more update showing how that Alrighty, it's about 10 minutes since uh, I last updated here. It's about time to turn the kiln off. Cone 10 is completely down, which is kind of how I like it. Um, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to first turn the regulator off, turn the tank off, remove the kiln shelf from the top here, scooch my bricks out of the way, and then I just kind of knock these over the flue hole to block the flue. And um, I pull the burners out of the way. Now, I mean, depending on what kind of kiln you have, this will differ greatly um, as to the procedure you need to do to shut your kiln down. So I'm gonna get something different than this three hole brick here. Um, like this insulating fire brick here and that's that it'll be ready to unload tomorrow